Welcome back to the Believe in Badger Football Podcast on the Believe Podcast Network, presented by BetOnline.ag. Once again, I'm your host, Matt Perkins, joined, as always, by Badger legend, the Hebrew Hammer himself. It's Matt Bernstein. (laughs) Good to see you, buddy. Hello. How you doing? Every day with you is a holiday. Oh, that is very Great. kind of you to say. So, yeah, it is It is good to be back with you, man. It is good to be back. It's been a minute since we were together. We've had a couple great interviews lately. Loved uh, loved all of our guests. It, it was a pleasure with all of them. But Calvin Barrett also just, like, really, like, he was someone I didn't know as well as some of these other guys that we had. And, man, he's an inspiring guy. He, dude, he's so inspiring, and and what he's doing today is is special. And you know, it's nice to see like a an ex football player doing so well for the community, especially in Madison. You know that we all love and cherish so much, no matter where you live, even if it is in Madison or it's not. You know, you're happy that there's leadership like Calvin there, um, protecting, serving, or whatever else they they say they do as as police officers. Well, they Although do, they- I never want to see Calvin in in a professional light. No, you don't want him coming to your house. Also, like, I'd be a little terrified if Sheriff Calvin Barrett showed up my house because, like, you know he'd be a menace with that wrestling background, too. You know he would be. He Now, could you outrun him? I think you could. Maybe. You know, you outrun the lineman. That's all. You can do that. We'll see. But I bet he'd catch up to you eventually. He will find you eventually. He will find you. Yeah, eventually. eventually yeah <laughs> he's unrelentless he doesn't need to beat you in a foot race he'll just like slowly walk get in the car he's like the terminator the terminator doesn't w- run he just kind of walks and finds you jason Voorhees. there, there you go. go there you go all right well we have a special mailbag episode today so uh that will be a lot of fun our first ever mailbag episode we got some great questions from you guys out there thank you so much uh before we d- get into that though one remind you that we are presented by betonline.ag our partners over there at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports uh, developments for the NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball fights, and NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all sports wagering needs, including live betting and the fan favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's easy to get started. Head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. Use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, Bernie. We got some really fantastic and questions then from the audience. When- we got some awesome questions from the audience. But when you win, when you win, sponsor us. There you go. I We would appreciate that. We would definitely appreciate that. Yes, we would love that very much. So, okay. Um, let's start. Uh, first question uh, from Jeremy in Los Angeles. Jeremy writes, hey, guys, love the show. Thanks, Jeremy. We appreciate the love. Wanted to know how Bernie feels, He how he would have performed in today's college game. And he wants to know how you would have prepared to train differently. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I always say that Madison, my Madison experience was probably the best one on the field, off the field, in the bars, doing crazy things. Um, so you say, how would I change? I don't know. I think my 20 year old stubborn, stupid self would still be going out at night and going crazy and getting drunk and and having like a very good time. I want to say I'd be like the Chanel brothers eat right not drink that much, you know, train, stretch, do all the things they did. How would I fare today? I think I'd be a killer still. Um, I think, you know, you look at some of these guys like Al Gingold, um, uh, John Chanel, they're not huge. They're not 265 pounds um, of, you know, fullback coming at you. So I think I would I would perform well. I also think that these dudes are just so much 
the of the evolution of the fullback and the human being that these guys are is special. So I would try to morph into like a John Chanel, but I don't know if my brain and my dumbness would let me go there. See, I think with you, your hands and receiving were underutilized. People don't realize that you can catch like pretty darn well. And I think that you would have been used in more, almost more of an H-back role in a lot of ways to stay on the field, whether you were a fullback or out there almost as a an additional tight end, doing a little bit of both. That's how I think you would have been you know, utilized in today's game. I think if I dropped like seven to nine pounds of fat, then I could have been in almost any role out. I'm being serious. I think almost any role out there on the field, especially the H back, you know, doing more motions, doing more routes. Um, but I wasn't asked to really do that. Yes, I could catch. I thought I was, I thank you. I agree. I was a fantastic catcher, um, but a receiver, but you know, I wasn't asked to do, I was asked to just run into people full speed and open up holes for, you know, Anthony Davis and Calhoun and guys like that. So you know, in the day of today, yes, I think I would have been a better wide receiver, H back, full back, but minus seven pounds. Like 258, I would have been a killer out there. Six pack, man, I would have looked good. You still look good, buddy. Yo, this is like 270 right now. So this is what you get. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately to say I am right there with you at 270. So but you're also three inches taller than me. So eh, eh, eh. either way, guys who are much bigger than 270, the offensive line, Adam brand, uh, from Instagram wants to know who the starting offensive line is going to be this fall. So I will go ahead and take a stab at this first. Um, I feel like, you know, I, I, I love watching the OL. You know this, Bernie. Like I'm an offensive line guy. It, it, it's really sort of what I enjoy watching most in football. So I think for this fall, I feel pretty confident about three of the guys I'm going to put in their position. So I'll start from left to right. I think Jack Nelson is a lock at left tackle. Tyler Beach is a lock at left guard. Joe Tipman is a lock at center. Uh Beach doesn't come back for a six year unless he knows he's starting. He knows his, if he has any sort of future whatsoever in the NFL, it's going to be at guard. Nelson is more athletic and more built to play tackle than guard. I think this is a good switch. He was right guard last year, but he's six, seven and he's like barely 300 pounds, which you say barely 300, you know, it's like, you know, in, in most walks of life, that's ridiculous. Uh, 300 is 300, but at, Offensive line, it does mean something. Like he was playing, at, I think like 297 last year. I want to say he gets up to at 6'7, 315. He is a, you know, that is prototype size. Um, it gets a little trickier on the right hand side. Tipman, obviously, he's back. He was, you know, I think 13 all Big Ten last year. I think he's an absolute monster. Uh, it gets a little trickier, though. Like I said, right hand side. <sighs> Gun to my head, I'm going to go Tanner Bordellini at right guard and Logan Brown at right tackle. But you could talk me into Michael Fertney at right guard and Bordellini sliding out to tackle. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think the left side of the line and the center is set. And I think that Tanner Bordellini is one of the five best offensive linemen. So you have to find a place for him. Now, whether that's a guard or tackle, I think more depends on who can give you more between Brown or Fert uh, Brown or Fertney. So if I'm going to throw a wild card in there, it's Riley Malman uh, at right tackle. He's young, but he's only a redshirt freshman, a little bit more raw as a prospect. But I think that the coaches seem to really like him, and they've shown this even in spring ball in the rotations that they were using. He was ahead of the five-star, the biggest recruit, Nolan Rucci. So I'm curious to see how that's all going to play out. Uh, Byrne, do you have any sort of thoughts here on the offensive line? No, I agree with you. I think the left side set, I think um, the center set. I'm interested to hear what I like what you said to move like Bordellini out. I'm I, I think that could potentially happen. Listen, we we have to get more we have to have more successful plays from the right side of the line yeah. this year. I think Graham Mertz cannot do what we are asking him as a as a team or as a state or as a country to do mm -hmm. without protection you know that's yeah. that's the constant thing and, and if so because what i worry years about and years 
these guys can protect the quarterback. Yeah, and because like like what I worry about there with Graham is you know is having the the David Carr effect where he got sacked so many times in his first couple of seasons that he got the yips and was never able to recover. We've had like a season and a half now of him getting hit a lot. And I worry about what could happen because of that. It's like, is his internal clock permanently sped up too much? which is leading to overthrows, which is leading to just missing on guys because he's worried he's going to get hit. Now, that can prob- that can hopefully be a coached out of him. B, he can learn that hopefully this year's line is just stronger and better able to keep him upright in the first place. I think he's got to have that confidence in the line. And it hasn't been there. I think also the play calling, but the line for sure. And once that happens, listen, I think you can kind of calm down. He's also getting older. So there is a lot of that. He's he's now not a, a rookie. He's had, what, three seasons under his belt? So this is this is the year where we're either – Yeah, this will be listen, his third year as a starter. Yeah. I, this, I, yeah, this is his third year as a starter. I'm a fan too. But this is the year where you and I might be talking mid-season and going, listen, it might be time to start thinking of somebody new. So I, I don't I don't want to make excuses for what's going to happen. I think last year's line was a sieve at the beginning, and it was scary to be a quarterback. Like, do you want to be the quarterback of the Badgers last year? Unless you were handing the ball off to Braylon Allen or Malusi, I don't want to be that guy. You're going to get killed. It's like you're on the you're the movie Jackass. You're just getting ran into by like bulls. <laughs> um, so I, I, I watched that documentary the other day. I can't believe these guys are like still able to do what they do. But are they still um, alive? But I do think that. Well, I mean, Johnny Knoxville to be alive is is a miracle at this point. Um, and if Graham had the same line for three years, it'd be a miracle if he were still alive. So I think, and also I love Bostad. So I think you do too, and I think as a coach of the line, these oh, dudes are sure. their production sure. will be so much better. Yeah, they're going to be so much better. I think it's night and day. All right, all right. Next question from Brian in West Dallas. What's up, West Dallas, Wisconsin? Uh, Brian wants to know what each of our West Dallas, <laughs> one of my favorite peoples from there. Uh, who's that? Who's from West Dallas? It's my uh, it's Michael Cleaver's wife. Oh. Michael Cleaver's Amanda Tomansek. She's, well, now Amanda Cleaver. She's my favorite person. One of them. Okay. I was just, I, I say, Besides I, I, you, my wife, my kid. I was going to say, I think that Allie might have something to say about that before uh, before it's all over. But well, Brian, she's my favorite person from Verona. Brian in, uh, in, in West Dallas, though, wants to know what each of our favorite Camp Randall tradition is outside of Jump Around. And I love this question. Oh my god! Dude, I love this off, question. Jump around, jump around's like one. I love it too. Jump around's one through ten for me. Exactly. But I, and I, think, I, I think that's is, the point, though. Well, well, it's the point. I love the student section race. Interesting. Oh, I love it. Like it's great. I love that everyone says sucks, sucks, sucks to them. Like. There's so many good ones. I used to love when they would call. I don't know if they do this anymore. So, Matt, please correct me or Brian or anyone else out there. They used to call people's names, like, you know, the starting linebacker for Michigan, whatever, Brian, Brad Smith, and they would say, sucks. So I don't know if they do that anymore, but it was amazing. We, uh, uh, I mean, when I was still sitting in the student section, we were still doing it. But, again, we're getting we're, – we're a little bit older than the people sitting in the student section these days. Uh, for me, I love, I love the tradition of hot time with the trombones every time you score a touchdown. I love, and, and I love all of, you know, everyone in the stands going, bah, 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 you know, you know, trying like acting like you're a trombone and stuff like that. And, you know, going back and forth and back and forth. And I just think that that to me, that was always just so much fun, uh, pretending to row, rowing. I love the rowing. Absolutely love the rowing. And and 
Build me a buttercup. I mean, I was going to say you, you can't go, you can't go wrong with build me a buttercup. You can't go wrong. Build me a buttercup is special. I love when someone who wears like the hat of a different, you know, an op- other opponent, and people take it off and throw it back and then throw it out of the stadium. Yep. I mean, now it's a little more difficult because they put the, you know, the back or the the um, scoreboard out there and all the other stuff. But I used to love when they would t- take someone's hat off and throw it all the way back. There's so much that goes on at Camp Randall that the 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 student section and all these things are more are just as fun as watching the game. To be honest, I mean, speaking of the the wave, right? The wave to to do and to watch and the to wave. get it to get it going. It's I always, so I I always sat in section P, I always sat in in section P. That's just where, and that's where I guess where I felt most comfortable. I don't know why I'm just being weird at this point. But section section P was great. But section P starts the wave, and so um, it was always I, I was always like very into that for some reason. The wave is so cool. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, speaking of like traditions and you know in stadium experiences, did you go to a lot of basketball games or hockey games or other sporting events, or did you just not have time to do that? I went to a few. I went to a lot more. Ba- I would say I probably went to like four or five basketball games, maybe like one, two or three hockey games. Um, I don't know why I didn't do more of it. I just didn't. I guess the games were more. You know, the games were on uh, – the basketball games were during the week. Mm-hmm. Usually I was waking up at 6 in the morning to go work out. So it just wasn't, you know, something that I just – there usually just wasn't – you know, and also I didn't, I didn't have any money. So I wasn't going to – I wasn't paying for tickets. I didn't have student tickets and I wasn't going to pay to go to the games. So I didn't go to any games. I think the th- I think I did go to three games where we rushed the court where they beat a, a, a an opponent, like a better opponent. It was awesome. Like I really had a good time at the games. It's just – I just couldn't afford and didn't have time. And, you know, let's go back. I wanted to go to Wando's instead of go watch a basketball game. That's true. That's true. I was, I was the guy that wanted to go to every sports game. Cause I was just obsessed. So, but it, I, it bummed me out. Like the, I only got basketball tickets my sophomore season, which was really frustrating. Like cause from, from the lottery, like I didn't get them from the lottery in the other seasons, which was, kind of annoying now that happened to be the year that alondo tucker like was an all-american uh like player of the year candidate and they were like a two seat in the tournament so that was that was cool but at well, the same have, time, like, like, how many seats do they have a couple thousand but i got i was able to get hockey yeah, a couple thousand when you have forty thousand students that's true but i don't know i i feel like yeah I don't know. It was it, it was it was frustrating to, to to say the least because I really wanted to go to the games, man. I just wanted to go to the games, uh, and I couldn't you know I couldn't afford I to it. scout I tickets it. or something like that or buy like real person tickets. You know the the hundred twenty six dollars for the for the student section tickets for the season was all I could afford. So, but the hockey games now I got now I had hockey season tickets the whole time and. That's when they were really good, right? They won the national title. I think your final year on campus, which was my sophomore year on campus, I think, um, and they, those were great. Now, the see, I love those in stadium, like in game traditions, as much as the ones at the football stadium. I think that the just just everything that happens at the hockey arena is as good of an in-fan experience. Now, the fact that the team kind of sucks now definitely takes away from it. Like, they're bad now. Like, they, they've gotten bad, and it's sad. Um, but, you know, those in, th- those were a lot of fun, too. And the way that you had that seniority pricing works, so by, by the time I was a fifth year, I was literally on the boards behind the goalie, like, to have, like, the best seats in the house. That was That was special for me as just, like, a Badger sports fan in general the hockey games were really exciting to go to i mean they, they they were one very good and you could get a ticket usually and it wasn't priced super high i love the tradition of somehow people would find that the the other goalie's mom's name mm. and scream it the whole time and scream yep. sieve mm-hmm. you know like it, yeah that's what i remember from going i remember just being like wow that's crazy. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I love, you know, every time someone falls, there's ice is slippery, you know, hey, bleeple, how much time is left? There was one minute remaining in the second period. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And just all all of those little things, yeah. right? Those are all they, they, they're just such a fun experience, and it, it felt like such a, a a. I mean, all of those, whether it's football, basketball, one of the reasons we go to these games, right? Because it's like a communal shared experience, and those, especially the hockey games, and especially you know the football games in the big football games, like those were a different level than even any basketball game when Wisconsin was number one, like. It was it, it it was a different feeling and it, it was really cool. I guess that's why I have such a strong bond to the university today was from those sorts of you know shared communal experiences. So you know, and we share those even when like you were on the field, well, and I was in the stands, right? And so we we can yeah. you know talk about that kind of things and experience those things together from different perspectives. But a Badger football game. A Badger football game is the whole day long. Yes. Pretty absolutely. much like if it's an 11 absolutely. o'clock game, you're there at 8 in the morning. So it's different than going to a basketball game from 7 to 9 and you show up at you know 645 and you work all day. Like Saturdays are strictly Badger game days. Like there's really nothing else going on. And then you catapult that into Sunday Packer games, right, if you're a Packers fan or the NFL – there's nothing like that experience. You're walking around. Everyone's wearing the same colors. You're all ch- – no matter what your views are in anything in this world, you're all there to support the Badgers unless like, you're the 20 other people from different fans. But you're all there. You're eating brats. You're drinking beers. You're having a good time, and you're enjoying the whole entire day, and then you get to go and watch the game. So there's something so much different about a, a football game compared to any other game. Yeah, absolutely there is. And it's why so many people feel so attached to the program because it is unique within the state. And it's even unique in in a lot of ways. Like, you know, a lot of the Big Ten programs have their own traditions that are great in their own right. And everyone thinks that their school's traditions are the best. But, you know, they're all wrong. But we know. But But we we know. know. But we know. Okay, I've got a question for you, Bernie. So, uh... If you, I, I originally wanted to ask this, you know, which of your former teammates would be best at Jeopardy? But I'm going to switch that up a little bit. Um, and uh, I want you to pick a team to do Badger Family Feud. You and four guys you played with, who would do the best on Family Feud? Oh. Dude, that's a great question. Oh, my God. There's a lot of guys I definitely don't want on my team. So who are we going to exclude um, from the top? Who's definitely not coming on Family From the top? Pretty much everybody. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, let's see. Not there's. Let's not go negative. Let's stay okay, positive. Okay, we'll stay positive. Um, we'll stay positive. I would say my four dudes, Jason because Posiak. It- Okay, a genius. So, He's like one of the smartest okay. dudes I know. So remember, think about Family Feud. It's not just like intelligence. It's also like understanding like people and, you know, culture and society. So it, it's, it, it, yes, it, can't, yes, it yes. can't just be book nerds. Um, Anthony. Also true. Uh, so Posiak. Yep. Um, I would go Anthony Davis. Why? I mean, I, it's obvious if you've ever talked to him. I get two I more think. picks. But why, why AD? What, what else about AD? Why would you choose him, dude? He he's he's uh, well. One, he's super smart. He knows so much. Of, his range of knowledge spans. You know, he can. I, I don't know how to say this politically correct, but like, he can span from like being a nerd to being like a little bit ghetto gangster. So I don't like that. Might not be right, but he spans like every type of person. If that makes sense. Okay. Okay. It does. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. He has a wide breadth of experiences. And he's also like one of my favorite people. So okay, I'm well, 100% you. on board with him doing anything that I do. Yes. Um, oh, man. Now I need two more people. Doesn't have to be just book smarts. Oh, God. This is hard, man. Trying to think of who I played with. 
like I would never be asked to join somebody else's family feud. So like it's hard for me to think of who would um man. You know, if I, I'll throw, I'd probably Brooks Bollinger. The dude yeah. just knows a lot about a lot. Mm-hmm. He's also a leader, so he might just take over. Um, and I need another smart individual. Can I take a coach? Sure. Absolutely. I would take CBW. That dude knows a lot. He's a weirdo. He might, he knows things that like, don't make sense. You know, like some people just have knowledge of things that like you never would ever know. He does. He's like a trivia. He would be great for trivia. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That, that That's a nice little, that, that's a nice little squad you've got there. Wait, I hope I didn't offend AD. Like I don't mean it in a weird, I just know how to say it. Like the dude spans every I know, type no, of human I, on this I earth. didn't think you were offending AD at all. I think that is like a, a testament okay. to his, like to, to his, intellect and lived experiences and his you know everything else he's done so he is an unbelievable person i mean we're we're not going very far in this uh <laughs> in this family <laughs> feud but i'll take it it'll You're be not a lot of fun, the finals least. no it's okay <laughs> um all Man, right that 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 question was a hard one well it's it's what i'm here for it's what i'm here for you got anything for me bud Oh my God, Maddie Perkins. Let me think. Dude, what is. Yes, I do have some. When you were on campus, where did you frequent? And did you ever see any football players doing things that were like outrageous? So I frequented by the time that I was, of course, of legal drinking age. Once I was of once I was legally 21 years old was when I started uh, uh, going to establishments that served alcohol uh, at night where I could consume them. Um, I worked at the nitty gritty. So I went to the, I went to the gritty a lot. I was a cook at the gritty for a while and maintained good relationships with all the people there. So I had, I, I was able to go there a lot and receive, you know, Cheaper drinks, free drinks, that kind of thing. Uh, I also lived three doors down from the from the gritty, which made it an easy place to get to. So I, I live between the gritty and the coal center on Francis. So um, if the house is still standing, it oh, is. Yeah, dude, that's like one. <laughs> that's like three places you could have lived. Exactly. So uh, it, it, I'm it, sure it's still standing unless you. Unless you burnt it down, I don't. Know. <laughs> we we did not it's get our, there. Wow, we didn't get our amazing. security deposit back. So, <laughs> but there, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't give it back to you either. Oh, of course you wouldn't. Um, no. So, so the gritty for sure and church key. Um, spent spent a fair bit of time with the church key, um, and you know, I it was hard for me to get into Wando's on you know on, on nights where. Uh, Friday night, Saturday night, when people were out, I wasn't. I don't. I didn't get the special cut in line treatment unless I went with. I was friends with a bunch of wrestlers, so unless I was hanging out with the wrestlers and were able to to cut in line there, I, I usually wasn't going to Wando's when I was out because I was not. Let's face it, I wasn't cool enough. I didn't have the cachet to uh, to hang around Wando's. Um, but also, uh, like I said, yeah, the gritty and the vintage. A lot of time with the vintage. So yeah, those were the establishments that I frequented the most in Bratz. I mean, everyone goes to Bratz. You can't not go to Bratz. I just like that you're like, you know, the vintage. Oh yeah, Bratz. I forgot about Bratz. And let's uh, yeah, yeah, all these other places. <laughs> it's only four. The Red Shed. Oh, and I went to State. No. And I was at the College Club. And I was, oh, yeah, I might have been about twenty five places. No, usually, I mean. <sighs> My favorite night to to freak in those establishments was Thursdays. Thursdays was far and away my favorite night to go out uh, because you could do power hour at the nitty gritty for dollar for for, do, for dollar beers basically from nine to ten, and then go from there over to we go from there. Then there, there was uh, 
what was it? it was called Amy's. I, feel, I think it might have been called. I think I want to say it was called like Amy's Cafe. That was they had really good yep, drinks, and then, and then they would have, uh, and, and then they would have like good, like they would always have a good DJ upstairs on Thursday nights up there. So we'd usually go, we usually go up there and hang out for a while, then hit the church key and then come home. Look at you. Yeah. I would say that there was not one bar in the Madison area that I didn't go to more than or less than twice. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. I, I, I tried to sample sample it out. And then I had a couple of really bad experiences at a couple of places and I wasn't going back. So usually those experiences involve Jameson because we just don't Jameson and I just don't get along. Matty P, the second they put the, um, the, what was the one, Jägermeister with Red Bull? What was that called? Jägerbomb. Jägerbomb, duh. <laughs> I can remember all the bars, but I can't remember the drinks. Once they made the Jägerbomb machine, do you remember that every bar just had these huge Jägerbomb machines? Like, it would press a button and it would just shoot it out. That was like the downfall of my brain, I think. Too many of those, too quick, too easy. Too cold, like you weren't tasting anything. Well, my my, my you friend just woke up like the next day with a terrible breath. We had a Jaegerator in our house that was designed to like freeze the Jaeger down to like the the temperature it was supposed to be, and so we literally had Jaeger on tap. Vile, okay, absolutely Matt, vile, vile. absolutely since, vile. Since <laughs> disgusting. Since being an adult now. From college to now, can you count on your hands, your fingies, how many times you've taken a Jaeger shot? N- yeah, it's zero. It's zero. I haven't. I haven't had any. <laughs> exactly. Why would I? What's the point? It's 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 so funny. It's like a college drink or a college shot, and then you never look back. Dude, I have a bottle of gin. I used to do gin and tonics at the KK every single time I was there. And then I was like, it, it, it like turns you into like the Tasmanian devil. Not in a bad way. You just like go bonkers. And I stopped drinking gin. And I have a bottle sitting in my my apartment right now that's been there for three years. And I'm like, I don't have to do with it. No one wants it. Because I, I feel like gin is a drink I do. that you either – you drink and co- I'll send it to you. you Please know, do you'll because probably, you'll probably wait, come G- visit. We'll drink gin the whole thing. Is the only liquor I really drink. So I was about to say that it's also an eclectic, like adult drink that a couple, like twenty five percent of the, like, I feel like the the people in the world can drink gin or want to. That's you. Yeah, that's me. That that's I'm I'm your guy. I'm your guy. My my roommate at UW, Zach, he is also your guy. The two the two of us are your guys. Well, good. Now I know two people who will drink a gin and something, and I'll stick with or just on the rocks. lights or spotted cows. Oh my god! Okay, you're just, just disgusting. Dude. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even know what it tastes like anymore because I haven't had it in like 15 years. Same with Jaeger. Dude, maybe – here's what we should do. We should have like – we should do Family Feud and I'll get all those guys on. And every time you get an answer wrong, you got to do a warm Jaeger or a warm gin shot. No, no. Uh, that that or, actually yeah, – great. No, that, that would actually be considered cruel and unusual punishment under the Geneva Convention. Like I don't think you can actually do, make people do that. You're probably right. We would need like a medic, a psychologist. We'd need a lot of people there just to be like, what are you guys doing? They wouldn't even let us do it at Wando's. No. Why would they? Why would they? <laughs> so just even thinking about I'm like sweating thinking about Jaeger. All right. Well, I think that's a good spot for us to wrap it up here for the day. Uh we went to some interesting places. I enjoyed this burn. We'll be back next week uh, with with a, with a friend, and uh, we, we're looking forward to it. So, uh, thanks for you know 
Thanks for listening. Thanks for following the show. We appreciate the questions. Wait, I, wait, Matty P, I got a question for you. Yeah. Dude, we have four more minutes. <clears throat> Tell me about the work you're doing with Clint, because I love it. Oh, yeah. So uh, our friend, Clint Cosgrove, uh, he and I do a weekly TV episode, effectively, about Badger recruiting over on BadgerBlitz.com. You can check it out on YouTube, Badger Blitz TV. Uh, it's part of the Rivals site. And, yeah, Clint and I do a weekly spot where we just cut it up talking about recruiting. It's a lot of fun. Found out about some really interesting prospects from him. So if you want to stay up to date on, especially the guys from the Midwest, a lot of guys from Illinois, St. Louis, coming around, check out me and Clint. Uh, Clint has been interviewing all the guys who've recently committed to the Badgers. They've gotten four commits in the last two weeks. So feeling pretty good. We could do a whole show on we could do a whole show on how people are committing so much earlier than they used to. Oh yeah. Right? This is for next class or the class after? This is for like this is for night this is for 2023. So like the like kids who are going to be seniors this year. So, yeah. So uh, I think most I mean it's cra- I just feel like it's crazy how I just think it's so cool but how am- amazingly hard and crazy um recruiting is now. It's insane. It's it's absolutely insane, and man, like to be to do what Clint does is absolutely incredible. It's it's absolutely incredible the amount of like film he it's has incredible. to watch and the judgments he has to make, and it's it's crazy stuff. I'm in the belly of the beast. I'm also now the editor in chief over at MikeFarrellSports.com, so where we cover a lot of recruiting. So it's a lot of stuff going on. A lot a lot of stuff going on here, but. Dude, I am very proud of you, young man. <laughs> Go get yourself a gin and tonic. I, you know what? I will be having one tomorrow night because it is my wife's last day of the school year tomorrow night. So we will be having a couple gin and tonics. Together. Oh, you should have a bottle then. <laughs> yeah. When I was a teacher and the last day of school happened, I was popping bottles. I was doing Jaeger bombs. Jaeger bombs. Do you remember that one, Jager Bombs? Yeah, that that, uh, that, sh- that Jersey Shore YouTube video. No, that was true. Oh, oh, the Jager Bombs was. Do we grew up when? Um, I was just saying, we grew up when when people were popping their collars and having multiple popped collars. Man, we lived the the golden the golden era, the golden days. I'm gonna come on with three popped collars you next should. time. You absolutely nobody remembers should. this. We were, it was so cool. Look at how cool we looked. I can't oh. even find this. Look at how cool. I can't even believe it goes covers my ears because I have no neck. <laughs> Look at how cool I am. <laughs> You're going to make me cough. I'm laughing so hard right now. Oh, my God. Dude, pop, pop collar is the stupidest thing I think we could have ever come up with as a generation. No, but, that, but no. here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. <laughs> if we didn't have that, we would not have gotten... Popping my collar by Three Six Mafia, which is just a just an absolute pantheon level song from them. So I'm okay with that trade off. I also knew where you were going. Yeah. Knew where you were going because that's the only thing that is good. Uh, less, maybe less sunburn on people's bombs. necks. Yeg bombs. <laughs> you, also true. I mean, that's why I pop my collar. It's more functional than. Uh, then cool. Yeah, but you don't have a neck to get sunburned. <laughs> I, well, whatever's the, this, the little bit of skin on my upper trap can get sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should have you should have seen me in the lock. Like you, if you would have, I'll, I'll say this: you would have died laughing if you saw me after like three weeks of football camp naked. It was like sunburnt tan of arms, legs. But up until like your mid um, calf, because I used to tape my ankles up to my thighs, because I used to wear shorter shorts, everything else was pale white, like just horribly pale white. Man, I was a a vision. This is what I don't know if that's true or not, but I was a sight for really sore eyes, like <laughs> eyes that hurt. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man all right buddy. oh man okay before this really goes off the rails before this goes off the rails I want to thank you guys <laughs> all for listening it's always great to see you too sir make sure uh to remember we are presented by betonline.ag head on over there use the promo code believe that's b-l-e-a-v to get 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit that's matt bernstein i'm matt perkins we are the Believe in Badger football podcast, and we will see you next time. Until then, on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. <laughs>